Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you a vlog of a day in the life of American living in New Zealand. We are a family of six who have lived in New Zealand for four years now and I'm just going to show you what it's like in a typical day in New Zealand and make sure you stay tuned to the end because at the end I thought I would take some time to share a story about uh, living here and uh, something that I think really shows a cultural difference between New Zealand and the US and who doesn't like a good story. So subscribe below if you like my content and stay tuned for a day in the life of New Zealand. Okay, so I always start my day with a tall glass of water before I head out for my morning walk at 6 a.m. Now, luckily, we're finally to the point where it's light out because I have been walking in the dark for a couple weeks. Now, here is my favorite part of the walk as I'm coming down my hill, and you can see this gorgeous view of the valley and of the city over to your right when you're facing the screen and the beautiful harbor that I live in, and I feel so blessed to live here and enjoy my walk every day. And then I come home and I make a big smoothie for all my kids to ensure that they get their nutrients for the day. I then make my espresso. Sorry, I'm not doing a great job with the milk here <laughs> as I'm trying to record at the same time. And I'm, so the milk isn't perfect, so my cool espresso design is not going to come out great. It's Tuesday, so some thoughts on Tuesday. So glad it's not Monday. <laughs> my first thought, I don't do well on Mondays. You wouldn't have liked my vlog. Well, maybe you would have liked my vlog. <laughs> but just to kind of highlight some details about school for the kids. My kids go to three different schools, so two colleges or high schools in one um, primary and they all start at different times so one starts at 8 20 one starts at 8 40 and one starts at 9 so that's fun okay we're off taking the kids to school okay so i'm at work now and i will pick up the kids at three uh and if i need to do more work i'll do it um at home. Okay, so I'm back in the car. <clears throat> it looks like I'm going to go home. There's a lot of construction going on at work and people moving out of the office, so it's just really loud. <laughs> and um, so I got some stuff done and it's just a beautiful day, so I thought mm, I'll just go home because uh, I'm getting some food delivered from the grocery store that I forgot about. And my husband's there, but he's like, oh, I'm in so many meetings and I don't want my ice cream to melt. Okay, so let me take you up to my home office. I'm excited to show you this because I decorated it a bit after I realized I was gonna be working from home three or four days uh, a week. So here is my office. Uh, you know, I got a couple cute things to put on the desk and there's my amazing view and a couch with a blanket and some pillows for, you know, just lounging when I wanna just read some things instead of always on my computer, but that's my home office. Here, the doorbell rang. Okay, so as I'm putting the groceries away, I just thought I'd share a little bit about uh, the grocery stores here. There are three main ones. We have Pack and Save, not Pick and Save, <laughs> Countdown, and New World. Those are the three main ones. And it's actually funny because Pack and Save would be the cheaper one, uh, Countdown would be mid-priced, and New World is expensive. And so I generally, I only go to pack and save because we have a big family, but sometimes weeks are busy. And so I have to get the delivery from countdown, but they have different stuff than pack and save. And so it's kind of nice. And like I would say, pack and save is better for meat. Um, produce is better at countdown and new world. I don't really shop at new world, so I can't really speak. Uh, except for that. I know like their deli and stuff is really good, <laughs> but yeah. So those are the three main food stores in New Zealand. So I just finished unloading all of the groceries. 
it's also a big job even when they do the shopping and deliver it <laughs> because you kind of have to like reorganize your your refrigerator and your pantry and clean it all out and then put all the new stuff in so I decided to lay down in my favorite spot so this is I'm laying on the floor in my dining room actually because the sun comes in through these patio doors and it's like really warm and it just feels so nice to have the sun on your face when you're working inside all day. So I'm walking into my garage and showing you some outdoor furniture that I'm refinishing. So yeah, I sanded this down, did uh, power wash and just the wood portions of this. It looks so nice. This is only one coat. And then I think I'm gonna go pick up some, a nice clear coat at the top to put over top as well. So I'll do two more coats probably, depending on how much stuff I have. And that is going to go out in our back patio. Looks great. Well, it's that time again. Time to get the kids from school. It's about 3 o'clock. And I'm getting tired. But it's time to get the kids from school. So, I normally have my kids, They since they go to three different schools, I have them meet in one spot. And I just pick them all up there. So, that's where I'm heading. Well, I'm back home again. It's uh, 3.30 and I am going to have to make dinner. Then I got to take uh, one of my daughters to tennis, and then I think I'll be done. We'll have to finish laundry. But yeah, typical day with me. It's Taco Tuesday. Yes, we're having a simple dinner of tacos because uh, I have to take my daughter to tennis, uh, so I didn't have a lot of time. So I just made some taco meat, and we'll just have some soft shell tacos, and that'll be dinner. Just dropping my daughter off at tennis. Six o'clock, this is what I'm doing, this is it. So I hope you guys enjoyed my day in the life of New Zealand. So I just thought I would end this video with telling a quick story that kind of highlights um, a difference in cultures between the US and New Zealand because I have lots of great stories and I just thought maybe this would be a fun way to communicate it. So it's always fun to end with a story. So here we go. Uh, when I first moved here, so it would be 2013, I literally had just been here like a week or two, not very long, maybe a couple weeks, but I didn't have a cell phone yet, you know, so that's pretty early on. <laughs> and so I was driving, I had dropped my kids at school and I was just leaving and all of a sudden my car started to smoke. And I was like, oh, okay, this is great. Like, I mean, it was out of the blue. Like there was no sign that anything was wrong with it. it just started smoking. And I was like, oh, okay. And I don't have a phone and I don't know anybody. And I don't know if my husband's at work all the way in the city, which is about 30 minutes away. I can't call him. <laughs> and so um, <clears throat> I pulled over and I ran to like the small little town that was by this. And I found somebody that I recognized from my kid's school. And I just said, hey, uh, my car broke down. Can you, I don't know how that's handled here. Can you take me somewhere? Uh, and she said, sure. And so she took me uh, to the petrol station or gas station. And I told the guy what happened. And he says, oh, sure, I'll come out and look at it. I'm like, oh, you will? You don't need to tow it and look at it when you can. He's like, oh, no, I'm not doing anything. I'll come look at it. So he drives out to where my car is. So probably about, I don't know, not far. It was like a 10 minute drive. But he um, comes out. He fixes my car. There's like, oh, you just need this little thing and um, I'll put this in. He had it in his truck and, uh, you know, he spent about an hour on my car and then he was like, okay, so you should be all set. And I was like, okay, but how much do I owe you? And he was like, oh no, I wasn't doing anything this hour. It's fine. I'm happy to help. And I just sat there like, what? So like as an American coming to New Zealand, and this is one of my first experiences with just the culture of not... Um, always grabbing for more money, always grabbing for this or that. I mean, he's a business and he's trying to make money, but he, but to him, that just made sense. I have so many other examples of this, but it just made sense for him um, to be helpful. And there's plenty of people that are, that would be helpful uh, in the U.S. if someone was like stranded on the side of the road. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that this guy is running a business and he just worked in my car for an hour for free. And I just don't think that that would happen in the U.S. <laughs> and just was just really nice. And I said to him, you know what? <laughs> I was actually a little bit uncomfortable, to be honest. Like, I feel like I should pay you for your time. I said, you know what? Well, you got my business 
from now on. So I always got all of my gas and petrol there and anything that I needed and I had him fix my car, do oil changes or whatever. So, you know, he got a lifetime customer. Um, and that was just like so memorable for me and so meaningful to me to remember, uh, you know, a time where like you just had no idea what to do and they just, you know, didn't even hesitate to help or, you know, it, it wasn't even that I had even said that I was new here or, you know, that he felt like I didn't have money. It wasn't any of that. It was just he was like, oh, no, I had nothing to do. And that made sense to him. <laughs> and to me, like just even as a business person, to me, I don't even think like that. So um, it was fascinating. So that's my story of the day.